Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering Dell Technologies World 2018. Brought to you by Dell EMC and its ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back to theCUBE. Day two of our coverage of Dell Technologies World. We're in Las Vegas, and I'm Lisa Martin with Stu Miniman. We're having a great day, great day and a half yesterday as well, learning a lot about what Dell Technologies is doing to help customers make things real. Digital transformation, IT transformation, <laughs> security transformation, workforce transformation, you name it. So we are excited to welcome back to theCUBE one of our alumni, Dan Inbar, the SVP and GM of Extreme IO and Scale IO. Welcome back, Dan. Thank you very much, good to be here. So, lots of news in the last day and a half. What is the state of the union with Extreme IO? So we're very excited today. We launched the, uh, the new release of X2 that brings to the market the native application capability, async native application, which is done like Extreme IO does everything in a very unique and special way, leveraging our architecture of CAS-based uh, architecture, and as such being a very effective and a very efficient uh, native application. In addition, what we've uh, launched now is the new release, which is an entry-level Extreme IO, allowing uh, customers to start with a, with a lower cost uh, platform, leveraging all the capabilities that Extreme IO brings with an enterprise grade solution, but in a lower market. So those are the big things that we have to Yeah, Dan, let, let, let's, let's unpack that a little bit for our audience. Let's start with the replication side. Sure. You know, e EMC with, with, with uh, you know, SRDF you know, decades ago really brought you know, replication to the, to the to storage market. Uh, it was one of the things when Extreme IO first came out that it was like, well, you know, if you want replication, it's not native. There are lots of options. Correct. The, the Dell EMC family has lots of options uh, out there. So, you know, explain kind of why what another went one. into it. Why another one? What what differentiates it? Sure. Yeah. So the unique thing with the, the our architecture is is that everything is basically we're looking at everything and fingerprinting everything so that we don't write anything that's already written. And when you add another replication capability now, we do the same thing. So it's part of the part of the array basically. So what happens is if it's, when you, you have an array, you do the first uh, replication, you start replication, basically most all solutions, you have to copy all the data first time and then you can do snap diffs or whatever. What we do is basically we copy everything already deduped and compressed. So you bring down the bandwidth up to 75% lower bandwidth. So it's significantly lower on the WAN, much more effective, as a result a lot more cost effective solution. Yeah, so uh, we, we'd actually looked at the Snap technology a few years ago as one of the things that differentiated Extreme IO in the marketplace, and what that means to businesses and how they can change how they work on it. Talk to us about the users and what, what does this replication mean to them and their business? How, how is it going to lead to further along that path of digital transformation that we've so, heard? So there's a few things that, uh, that this brings to the market. First of all, because of our architecture, so that you can now have your production, we always said you can have your production and, uh, and QA and dev on the same platform because of all the snapshots that basically doesn't cost you anything. Where now, if you want to, if you want to now separate it, it doesn't, you don't have to pay for the one, so it's still basically for free, but you can put it in a different environment and you can have your whole test and dev environment separate, if those who want to do it that way. So you have that ability again. In addition, but, but once you do all the, the replication, you can get into for example, if you do one too many replication, you can have one station that does replication, you'll get dedupe across all the systems. So again, a lot more efficient solution. So basically what it brings you in the data transformation world is a lot more effective, cost-effective solution, and it's a very unique way of, of approaching it. So I want to talk about, about how this is impacting IT organizations. Is IT now, and I think Michael Dell even said yesterday, needs to become and can become a profit center we're seeing a lot more business leaders recognize that IT should be a, a business strategy. There's so much potential for it to really become much more horizontally aligned within an organization. Talk to us about, from that perspective, as you're talking with customers and presumably CIOs and leaders there, what are some of the benefits they're looking for this technology to deliver in terms of, of elevating IT in a transformative way? So, so what customers are seeing is that, that by using this is that they're Basically, they've taken away this problem from, from, from the end user. He's basically got all the resources he needs, he's got the performance that he needs, he's got no issues, and the cost-wise, it's significantly lower. So what it allows them, for example, 
if you want every developer to have his own copy, his ability to work independently without having everyone fight about the number of copies we can do, who's getting what copy, you can just do it. You can have endless amount of copies, it doesn't cost you anything. This is a very different way of doing things. It allows you to move a lot faster. And the pace, as we, as we heard Michael talk about uh, yesterday, the pace is picking up. These kind of technologies allows you to work a lot faster, a lot more, uh, more, a lot more reacting to what's happening in the, in the field. All right, so Dan, when Extreme IO came out, it was already a relatively small building block built for kind of a, a really a scalable uh, architecture. So explain to us what it means that you have a new entry level. What has what changed from a technology standpoint that, that's allowed you, you to <laughs> kind of repack So it? what you're talking about is with X1 was it was a scale out architecture, as sure. you mentioned. Uh, X2 brought to the market uh, scale up as well as scale out. So each, each brick can have up to 72 drives. So you can start with uh, 18 drives and grow by, by small packs. So you have a lot more granularity. Uh, what the X2T does, it starts, it goes up to 36 drives. Okay, so it gives you the ability, it's more limited from the point of view of the scale out. You can always upgrade it, but for customers should make uh, the decision up front. If it's a small system that he wants, then it makes, sure, uh, makes sense to go with X2T because it's limited and doesn't scale up. You can upgrade it, but you'll end up paying more okay. than to get to the same scale. So is there different hardware or is this a limiting on software? How, how is this product different from the it's, uh, main it's, one? It's basically the ability to work the system with less, with, uh, with less memory in the system with, because it's a smaller system, so you can work with less memory. Okay, so, so it's actually a different chassis though, is that no, right? It's no, it's the same box exactly. You can always upgrade and you buy an um, expansion kit okay. and you just add the memory and then you're, you're back to an R which is the, the code name for the larger scale-out system. The only problem is because it's an upgrade, because you're doing it after the fact, because you're doing it in the field, you're going to end up paying more. So if a customer thinks that he needs only a very small system, prices of the essence, this is the solution to go with. Okay. But if you want to add the scalability capability, you should probably start with an R. All right, C can you bring us inside, you know, was this a pull from customers to ask for this type of configuration? Are there specific use cases uh, that, that, that you're hearing for this? Yeah, what, what, what we're seeing is a lot of demand from the field were to have all, and we're seeing it more and more, all the goodies that the high-end high solutions bring, but costs is an issue. So basically they're saying we want a, 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 a more competitive solution uh, with all the capabilities. We love the product, but give it to us cheaper. So that's always true, and we're doing a lot of work to get that there, but the X2T gives an opportunity for a customer to understand the values that Extreme IO can bring to you, and then afterwards grow and understand the capabilities moving on. So some of the things that I've heard Dan, you articulate, uh, show how this technology can help customers transform IT. We've talked about getting things done faster, less cost, um, digital transformation as, as a, a um, can be enabled by this technology. It also sounds like workforce transformation. As you were saying, it sounds like things can be done more easily, maybe with less uh, kind of competition internally. I'm wondering about the security front. So we talked about that as one of the four tenets of transformation. Right. How does some of the, the native replication, for example, and the new capabilities of what you just announced, how does it help organizations facilitate security as they grow, have more and more data, which opens up you know, attack surfaces? So as you mentioned, I mean, replication adds obviously for the security, the data, data security, not the pure security of someone penetrating, of course, but obviously the product itself has got all the securities and all the qualifications that are required in order to offer a completely secured offering. So from that point of view, obviously you're covered. The replication brings to the market the capability of having it in a DR site, off-site, et cetera, and all those capabilities that are were proven time and time again worth doing. All right. Dan, uh, last thing I wanted to cover is in your organization, you also have the Scale.io product, so Big announcements with, with, with the, the, the X2 piece. What, what, what's the update on, on the scale IO piece? We've had the opportunity to interview on theCUBE you know, customers over the years, and you know, wh where does that fit in the portfolio? So scale IO is, is as you know, we've, we've repositioned it now to be a part of the VFlex uh, OS solution, uh, and we're working very closely with the VxFlex uh, team. Uh, as such, we're basically trying to push it to more, you have the VxFlex OS, you have then the VxFlex uh, ReadyNode solution, which is basically qualified Dell servers that you can combine together with uh, our OS. 
we're working on making it into an appliance, uh, which will come complete, and then our rack, which is a full HCI. So really, the, 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 the repositioning is to make it more, to be easier to consume in the broader market. Obviously with the large customers, et cetera, continue to consume it uh, as they did in the past, but really it makes it much easier to consume. As, as we were saying before, the, the value of the, uh, scale I.O. is very clear, and it's a great product. It just makes it easier in this new positioning to consume by a broader market. Dan, thanks so much for stopping by, sharing what's new, how it's differentiated, and we look forward to having some customers on to talk about the business outcomes that they're achieving. So thanks for your time. Thanks very much for having me. We want to thank you for watching theCUBE. I'm Lisa Martin with Stu Miniman. We're live in Vegas, day two of Dell Technologies World. Stick around, we'll be right back after a short break.